I am kind of getting my sock mojo back. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today is podcast episode number 25. In today's podcast episode, I will be updating you all on what I've been knitting for the past two weeks. I have a lot of variety in today's episode. I have a ton of new cast-ons specifically for gift knitting. I've kind of resurrected a few abandoned whips that have been sitting at the bottom of my project bag for a while now and I have some new yarn to show you all as well. Before I get into all of the projects. I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is my most recent Finnish object, the Lana Vest. It is a pattern by Irene Lynn, and I knit this out of originally lovely Lana in the color Merlot. It's just this beautiful oversized thick wool vest. It has beautiful texture, beautiful all over cables and double moss details and two by two ribbing, and I just love it. I have it paired with this basic white t-shirt for a more casual look, and also because I would get way too hot filming this video if I wore a long sleeve and then this vest on top of it. So yeah, that's my outfit here. If you want more info on the Lana vest, you can visit my Ravelry project page on it or watch some of the previous podcast episodes where I talk a lot about the process of making it. All right, so I do have a small finished object to show you, but it comes in the category of gift knitting, which I'm gonna save towards the end of the video. So we're actually going to jump straight into works in progress. So I have a lot to go through today. I will first start with the projects that you guys are familiar with, the ones that I've been working on more recently. And the first is my boho blush shawl. So some background on this project, Boho Blush is a shawl pattern by Andrea Mowry. It has a crescent moon shape. It is pretty long and not super deep. Like I'm almost done with it and you can see the depth here. So it does have that rounded edge, which is really nice. And it is alternating sections of garter stitch and some brioche as well as some lace. I am knitting this in Sorella Yarns Classic Sock, which is a 100% superwash merino fingering weight yarn. I'm using the color red, which is from the Taylor Swift Eras collection. The red color is a really nice tonal, or you could even call it variegated, because I think there is a lot of variety of the different levels of red in this yarn. It is sort of like a very Christmassy red. You could also call it more of like a traditional lipstick red, but it's just a really nice color. I would say, if anything, the red leans a little bit darker than your classic traditional bright Christmas red. But I was hoping to have this done in a timely manner to sort of wear it this month of December to kind of be Christmassy because I think it would help dress up some outfits. You can see it's not off the needles yet. I actually have two more sections to go. So I just finished this garter stitch section right here and I'm about to start a brioche section and then after the brioche section is one more garter stitch section and then I can finally cast off. So I didn't finish this as fast as I wanted to but that's okay, it's a very big project. I have it on my longest needle cord and you can see how scrunched up it is. There are a lot of stitches. I think I'm into like the 400s of stitches and it's knit fingering weight on three and a half millimeter needles. So yeah, every row takes a very long time. I think, oh geez, I was just stab myself in the eye. <laughs> Every row takes a very long time. I haven't exactly timed it, but I think I was sitting in a Zoom meeting for work that was a half hour scheduled meeting, and I got through exactly two rows of this during that Zoom meeting. So I guess approximately 15 minutes per row at this point. So it's a lot of knitting, but it is coming out really nice. I can really see how nicely this is going to drape and wear. I'm really excited to block it because it'll just open up. The stitch will really open up in both the brioche and the lace patterns, which hopefully you guys can see pretty well. I feel like I haven't done a good job of showing the lace pattern, but this most recent repeat I think looks really nice. And you can see that there. I really love how the lace pattern makes the garter stitch sections that surround it kind of wavy. I think the brioche is a good, it's like interesting contrast because you have the wavy lace and then you have the very structured straight brioche and then all in a sea of garter stitch. It's a really nice design and I've really enjoyed knitting it. 
The pattern calls for 250 grams of fingering weight yarn, so I have in total 300 grams of this yarn just because it's sold in 100 gram skeins. This pattern does include a good amount of fringe at the end, which I know is included in the yardage for the pattern, so I'm not sure if I'll end up using the third skein at this point. This is how much left I have in the second skein of yarn. So there's definitely a lot. I would say I've used like 25% of the second skein and I don't have too much to go. So I am curious if this will end up being a two skein shawl. If it is, of course, I will let you all know because I think this would be a great way to use up. Maybe if you have some extra two skein quantities in your yarn collection, this might be a great pattern to use. All right, my other recent works in progress that you've seen in previous podcasts, I actually haven't really touched in the past few weeks. So I'm just gonna briefly flash them on the screen to show you and remind you, maybe remind me that I should work on them. But <laughs> so first is my Ollie sweater. This is a pattern by Marita Harvey, and I'm knitting this in Woolberry Fibrico's Rabbit Rump held with Birch and Lily Fibrico's Undyed Surrey. It's a really nice fabric. I kind of call this my Oreo sweater. It's got some nice gray and black speckles on a cream base, and it's gonna be just a nice staple oversized drop shoulder sweater. So I haven't really touched this in a while. I actually haven't touched this because I'm at the point where I'm running out of yarn in my first skein and I want to start alternating skeins because it's hand dyed yarn and that just takes some brain power that I haven't like put into yet so I've kind of put this on pause until I can decide how I want to alternate skeins with this. I am still knitting flat so no helical knitting yet but yeah. Here's my brief progress update on this. Next up, I have my Robin beanie. This is a pattern by Sari Nordland and it is a top-down two by two ribbed beanie. I am knitting this out of originally lovely Pura in the color Dusk, which is this really beautiful heathered, sort of very light pink. And you can see in the heathering, there's some like oranges and like darker purples. It's a really nice yarn color. This pattern is knit on three millimeter needles all over two by two rib and I'm at the point where you just knit two by two rib until you cast off so I don't know I just haven't really had the motivation to work on this but I know it's going to be a really nice hat when it's done. All right now we'll get into some projects that if you have a good memory you might remember them but I really have not worked on them in a while like since the summer I think and the first is my April cardigan so let me grab that. So I don't know how much you guys remember this, but over the summer I started an April cardigan. This is a pattern by Petite Knit, and I have knit it once before. I really love it. I really love the silhouette. I really love the cut. So I was really excited to knit a second one. The yarn that I'm using is Estelle Yarns Highland Alpaca DK in the color charcoal. This is a blend of alpaca. It's 60% alpaca and 40% highland wool. And this yarn was gifted to me by the Twisted Pearl Yarn Studio. So I'm knitting this pattern on four millimeter needles. It's creating a really nice fabric. And this is just a really nice staple neutral gray that I can add to my wardrobe. I've never knit a garment out of alpaca blended yarn before besides Surrey alpaca, but like a alpaca wool blend and it's really nice. It definitely feels like it has good structure, I think from the wool, but you can see there's lots of fibers that are coming off of it. It is kind of drapey, but not too much that I'm worried that it's gonna lose its shape. You know, it still feels pretty structured and it is very soft and I really like sort of the natural heathering that comes from the mix of the two fibers. So I'm excited to work on this cardigan. So I really can't remember the last time that I talked about this on the podcast, what exactly I discussed, but when I picked it up out of my project bag, I had still a little bit to go of stockinette in the body, and then I just had to finish the body. So that's what I did. I think I did it because the needles I was using I needed for a different project. So I was like, all right, let me just get through the ribbing of this, cast it off, get those needles back, and... Yeah, so not a whole lot to explain. <laughs> it's a stockinette body and then one by one ribbing at the end. It's a pretty sizable chunk of one by one ribbing. I kind of like that in the style of the April cardigan. So you can see it's pretty long here. I did end with a Italian bind off. I did not do tubular because 
I don't know. I just didn't feel like doing tubular. I didn't really want the added like roundness at the edge. I just wanted like a clean, crisp, flat bind off. So no double knitting before doing the sewn Italian bind off. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. There's obviously a lot of cinching with the ribbing compared to the stockinette, but once I block it, it will straighten out and look great. So all I have left to do are the sleeves. I say all I have left to do, but there's a good amount of stuff I still have to do. I do have to do the sleeves, and of course the button band is saved for the end. I am planning on modding this cardigan pattern to do a double knit button band. The pattern calls for just a one by one rib, you know, normal, simple button band, and I like it. I don't really have a problem with it, but I do wanna try the double knit button band. I do think it has a little bit more of a classy look, more streamlined, so yeah, I'm excited to try that. Maybe a little scared. I know it can be challenging to get the tension right. I've never done one before, so that'll be sort of a learning process for me, but I don't really know when I'm gonna get to the sleeves and the button band of this. I really just wanted to finish the body and then this kind of went back to the bottom of my knitting project bag. So I am going to be focusing on some other projects, but did want to give you guys a little update on my April cardigan. And there is one other project that I resurrected from my project bag, and that is my dorsal socks. I know, I haven't worked on socks in forever. You guys probably don't remember these socks, but this is a pattern by Helen Stewart. It is part of the Handmade Sock Society pattern bundle. It was like a summer bundle, so it was kind of like summer themed. So these socks have these beautiful little whale tails at the back of them, and that's pretty much the main focus of the pattern. The rest of the sock is a plain stockinette sock. So the yarn that I'm using is Sorella Yarns Nylon Sock, which is an 80-20 sock yarn, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon in the color Toile. This is from the Spring Tonals collection. It's just this really nice pale blue, and I am knitting this sock on one and a half no, US one and a half, but size two and a half millimeter needles. I'm using the size small in the pattern, which is a 56 stitch cast on. I was trying with these socks to sort of experiment with sock sizing and like needle size and stitch count. And the 56 stitches on this needle size seems to fit pretty well. The only thing I don't love about it is because it's a larger needle size than what I'm used to with socks, I feel like the stockinette is not as tidy as I want it to be. And I know it'll block out nicely, but the fabric just seems a little bit too loose for my liking. So I think in my next pair of socks, I'm gonna stick with the 56 stitches, but go down a needle size to a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle and see how those fit. Hopefully they won't be too snug, but I do like my stockinette fabric better on US 1 needles. Also with this sock, I did do a Fish Lips Kiss Heel. This is my very first time doing a Fish Lips Kiss Heel. I have traditionally done a heel flap and gusset for like all of my other socks and it's okay. I feel like I don't love the heel flap and gusset. I feel like it's too baggy around my heel and short row heels tend to be more form fitting. I think it's also an easier process to knit once you learn it because the stitch count doesn't change. You don't have to like leave stitches on hold and then pick up stitches and have like a flap that you have to work into. So I really liked the process of the Fish Lips Kiss Heel and I did try it on. I do think it fits pretty well. So I might incorporate that into my sock knitting rotation and my next pair of socks. I do have the other pair, the other sock. I left it out there, but <laughs> I want to get these off the needles. They've been on my needles for so long for no reason at all. And now that I'm past the heel and I'm past the, you know, charted lace pattern, there's no reason I can't finish this in a couple days. I just gotta whip through the stockinette. So hopefully these can get done because I do have some Christmas sock yarn that I wanna cast on with. I feel like I can't justify having multiple pairs of socks on the needles at a time, so. That'll be motivation for me to finish these and start my Christmas socks. Okay, I went and grabbed my other sock because I thought it would just make more sense and give more context to the finished pair of socks. So yeah, this is what the dorsal sock will look like when it is done. It's hard to see that the pattern is on the back of the heel. It's definitely more visible when it's actually being worn instead of in sort of this like blocked format, but 
Yeah, I actually haven't blocked this pair, this, I keep saying pair, this sock. It's just been sitting on the sock blocker for so long because once I finished it, I just put it on the sock blocker to sort of store it until I finished the second sock. It has been literally months, so it kind of blocked itself just over time on the sock blocker, which is funny, but this will be a nice pair of socks as we get into winter and I'm wearing my boots and cold feet. I've been finding a lot more use in my hand knit wool socks. I definitely see them as a lot nicer than some of my commercially made socks that are usually sort of a cotton base. So I am kind of getting my sock mojo back for the practical purpose of owning more wool socks. And yeah, it's fun to knit socks. So you'll probably see me knitting more socks in the future once again. <laughs> all right, now we'll move on to new cast ons. I have a bunch to share. They're all small accessory patterns. Patterns. And the first one that I will start with is the Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordlin. So Sari Nordlin is running a mystery knit along for a new shawl pattern this month of December. She's doing four clues released every Wednesday. And the first clue was just released this past Wednesday. So if you're participating in this mystery knit along and you're trying to avoid spoilers, I will give you a warning before I show the pattern, but I did just wanna go over the pattern specs, the yarn I'm using first, so I'm not showing any spoilers yet. So when Sari Nordland posted that she was starting a mystery knit along, I was really excited because I like the idea of a smaller commitment mystery knit along. I've never wanted to commit that much time to something large like Stephen West's shawls. I probably will never do the mystery knit along. They're just not really my style, but Sari Nordland's patterns definitely are my style. I'm growing to appreciate them more and more as time goes on. And I actually had her Lalu shawl earmarked to knit kind of soon because I had this wonderful yarn in my yarn stash that I got in Oslo right here this is the pickles bliss yarn so I got three balls of this when I was in Norway and I knew when I was buying it that I would want to make a small shawl with it it is this beautiful blend of baby alpaca highland wool and mohair and it's a fingering weight single ply yarn and you can see there's lots of fibers coming off of it. It has kind of its own halo. It is very soft to the touch. Um, being a single ply, it's definitely gonna be kind of like soft and airy and I knew this was the perfect yarn to use for the mystery knit along. So being that I already had this on hand and that the knit along was starting just a few days after she posted her original post, I was like, I'm in, sounds like fun. It's only a four week commitment. And I also thought it'd be fun to sort of do this as kind of like a knitting advent mindset because I don't have a knitting advent yarn calendar. So I kind of like the idea of this being like a once a week thing to look forward to, to open the clue and see what it is. So I'm very excited to be participating. So Sari suggests for yarn to use a fingering weight merino held with a lace weight silk mohair. She advertises this pattern as being a great way to use up some extra skeins you might have. It only uses one skein of the merino, like a 50 gram ball of Sandus Garn Sunday or Knitting for Olive Merino, and then one 25 gram skein of silk mohair, like the KFO silk mohair or like Sandus Garn Mohair or any other brand. So it's definitely a good small quantity yarn project that can use up something in your stash. She recommends three and a half millimeter needles. I actually decided to size up to four millimeter needles because this yarn I think is on the thicker side. It is advertised as a fingering weight and I am holding it double for the pattern, but this is a 50 gram ball and within it are, is 175 meters and 191 yards. So you can see it's a little bit thicker than a standard fingering weight and because I'm holding it double, it's even thicker than a merino and a lace weight mohair, so I didn't want to compromise drape, so that's why I went up in needle size to hopefully combat the sort of thickness of the yarn. And it's at this point that I'm going to start showing the shawl and what I've knit so far, so if you're waiting on clue one, don't wanna see spoilers, I will give you your warning now. All right, so I'm pulling out the shawl now. <laughs> and here's what I have so far. So I am about three quarters of the way through clue one, and this is what I have. So the pattern is all charted, so I've just been following the chart. I don't 
normally follow charts as is because I'm left-handed. I tend to mirror them in like a photo editing software so then I can read them correctly, but I actually just decided to read this as is so I don't get any like flipping of the chart itself, if that makes sense. I do at one point want to film a video about what I do to accommodate my left-handed knitting because everything tends to be published for right-handed knitters. It's a lot of prep so I have not filmed or made notes for what I want to do with that yet. At some point I will, but <laughs> until then, just little blurbs here and there in the podcast will have to do. I'm just following the chart as it's written. When you follow the chart as it's written, as a left-handed knitter, you can't follow the definitions of the symbols as written because then you'll get reverses of what they're saying. So for example, if in the chart they have a symbol for like a right-leaning cable cross, if you go to the legend of the chart and then follow the written directions for the right-leaning cable cross, as a left-handed knitter you will get a left-leaning cable cross and it won't match what is supposed to be in the pattern. So I'm strictly just looking at the chart and seeing like visually like, oh that's a right-leaning cross, and then internally just doing my left-handed instructions for a right-leaning cross, and now I am able to get a result that exactly matches the right-handed version. So this is what I have so far. It starts down at the bottom, you cast on a small amount of stitches, you start doing some double knitted borders, which I think look really nice, and you can see that this pattern includes some horseshoe cables. There is like a little ladder here, which I have done this before in the Moby sweater. There is this really cute zigzag of twisted stitches with bobbles, which is fun. And then it seems like on the far side here, there is another ladder and I'm just starting another cable section. Although this isn't a horseshoe cable, this looks like it's just gonna be a traditional sort of regular cross cable. So really cute so far. It's funny because I generally don't love horseshoe cables and I don't love baubles, but I don't know, I'm just having a good time with this pattern. I'm not being picky about it. So it's been really fun to sort of follow the chart and kind of not know what's next. Although I found that people are not being too spoiler alerty. Is that a word? People aren't giving spoiler alerts for this mystery knit along as much as I've seen people do spoiler alerts for the Stephen West mystery knit along. Like people will put cover photos on their posts so you don't see the mystery clue result until you swipe on Instagram, but with Sari's pattern, she was posting it, people who've knit this were just posting it with no spoiler alerts, so I don't know. <laughs> I kind of was upset when I saw some people's posts before I had even started knitting it, so I think when the next clue comes out, I'm just not going to check Instagram that day until I get home from work and can sit down and look at it myself and then I won't be spoiled on Instagram. So. <laughs> Regardless of all the spoilers, it's been really fun. I have never knit bobbles before. This is my first time doing bobbles, and I just followed the bobble directions that Sari wrote in the pattern. I think they turned out okay. I don't really know what determines a good bobble versus a bad bobble, but you definitely get some loose stitches, so I was trying to make sure that it was tight when I was closing the bobble. So, yeah, kind of fun. From the back, looks pretty normal. I do like the triangle shape. I do like how the yarn is knitting up. Obviously with a single ply yarn I'm not going to have the most intense stitch definition as if I use like a very tightly wound like four ply yarn, but I really like how this is coming out. It is really soft. There is a lot of fiber that's coming off of it. I don't know if you can see. I'm holding it in contrast with my dark vest, so maybe you can see like the fibers that come off of it. It is very fluffy, kind of sheds a little bit, but I think it'll be a really nice sort of neck accessory or head accessory and the cream color I just love. I feel like cables and cream yarn just go together so well. It's so classy. I feel like this pattern also looks kind of Christmassy or holiday-esque because of the baubles. I don't know why I associate baubles with the holidays, but I feel like in knitting this just looks very like whimsical, which then I associate with holidays, but that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> And yeah, these are the two skeins of the Pickles Bliss that I am holding together for this fabric on four millimeter needles. I am a little worried it's not as drapey as I want it to be. You can see it has a little bit of stiffness, but I'm hoping that blocking will help. I mean, there's some drape. I just think it's not as drapey 
than like a fingering weight merino with a mohair because it is pretty thick but I think once it gets bigger it'll get more drape so we'll see how that turns out okay now we'll get into all of my gift knitting that I have planned for Christmas so I did decide to gift knit this year I'm not super big on gift knitting like I could go either way with it I could definitely give you points on why I don't like gift knitting but then I could also give you points on why gift knitting is enjoyable and for this year I decided to do some gift knits for my nieces and nephews I thought it'd be fun to make them all hats because child hats take less yarn and I thought it would be a good way to use up some yarn that I have you know in small quantities and I'm not really sure what else to do with it and also yeah I think it'd be fun to give them some hats I have not given them anything hand knit before and people in my family always love to hear when I'm knitting and they're like oh your hats are so nice so <laughs> I thought it'd be a good idea to knit some hats so I actually have one that I finished already so most of the hats I'm going to knit are going to be Oslo hats because I find they knit up really quickly because of the stock and knit. I've made the pattern before, it's reliable, it comes in a variety of sizes so I can do like baby, child, adult sizes for whoever I want to knit for and yeah so I started out with one baby Oslo hat. Isn't it so cute? It's so small. I love it. The yarn that I used is Red Stag Fiber Co. Dasha's Sock, which is a fingering weight four-ply sock yarn. I'm trying to remember the <laughs> fiber breakdown. It's 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and then 10% nylon. So kind of an interesting blend. I feel like the blend of the fibers gives kind of a heathered look. There is a little bit of a halo. It is very soft, and I did hold it double for the hat. So for the Oslo hat baby, I wasn't sure the stitch count to do because I was watching Knit California's podcast and she's like the queen of Oslo hats. So she makes them all the time and she gave a hot tip that I did not know. So Petite Knit has two Oslo hat patterns. The first is the Oslo hat traditional and then the second is the Oslo hat mohair edition. Now both of those patterns call for the same gauge. It's like 23 stitches per four inches and 32 rows per four inches with DK weight yarn. However, the also hat regular calls for three and a half millimeter needles. The also hat mohair calls for three millimeter needles. The also hat regular only has four sizes, whereas the Oslo Hat Mohair Edition has seven sizes. They both range from baby to adult, but the Oslo Hat Mohair pattern just has a little bit more nuance, like if you're doing a child small or a child large or like a junior small, whereas the regular Oslo Hat pattern just does like baby, child, adult, and then adult large. So I actually only had owned the Oslo Hat pattern, but then I purchased the Oslo Hat Mohair pattern to get an idea of the stitch counts for what Petite Knit suggested for each size. And it was kind of interesting because like the Oslo Hat Baby in the mohair pattern stitch count was different than the Oslo Hat Regular Baby, even though it's the same gauge. And then I was also reading Ravelry project pages and a lot of people said that the baby stitch count was too big, like they knit it and it was just way too big. So they had to decrease the stitch count. So basically I had, a little bit of reference about what to cast on but not really is kind of up to me so I decided to follow some Ravelry project pages that said they cast it on 88 stitches for the baby size and it worked out well so that's what I did 88 stitches here on three and a half millimeter needles with the fingering weight yarn held double I did follow the pattern dimensions for like how long to do the brim and how long to do the body with the decreases and such so everything except the stitch count I followed the pattern for. The color of this yarn I think I forgot to mention is called Royal Ballet and I do have to block this still it's not blocked I find that the Oslo hat really needs a blocking because you have the stockinette like turn thing and if you don't block it it kind of doesn't lay flat and then you get this it doesn't really like fold as nicely so yeah gotta block this and yeah let me tell you the other hats i plan on knitting for gifts okay so i do have another also hat baby in the works for one of my other nieces also i'm talking about this because i am very confident that my nieces and nephews are not watching this video. I, I'm also pretty confident that their like parents or family members are not watching this, but 
I'll take the risk. If they are, maybe. <laughs> it's not really a surprise for the parents, but it's fun if they don't know as well. <laughs> so my other also hat baby, I have cast it on already. I am knitting this out of Knit Picks Hawthorne Speckle. This is a 80-20 wool. Wait, let me see what it is. Yeah, this is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon speckle, two-ply sock yarn. It is the color Penatone. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's basically like a cream with all these orange, yellow, and some blue speckles, which I think is really cute. So yeah, I have it casted on. Same stitch count as before. Now this fabric is definitely thicker than the hat I just showed you. I think the yarn is just thicker. So definitely gonna be a thick hat, but hopefully not too thick and not too stiff. But I really like how the fabric is turning out. It's pretty cute. And I also am using these really cute stitch markers. They're little sweaters that I got uh, gifted from Birch and Lily when I ordered some yarn. So thanks Amanda for these. And yeah, not much to show with the Oslo hat because it's just stockinette. I think the longest part of the pattern is getting through the initial section before you fold the brim. Once you fold the brim and turn the work, it really flies after that. I took a little lunch break. I don't know if the frame's a little different. Some time has passed. The lighting might be different. <laughs> the sun just sets so quickly now that we're closer to winter and yeah so I hope it's not too dark and I also cannot remember where I left off talking about this baby also hat but yeah I guess I'll just conclude with hoping that this knits up pretty quickly I finished the other one in just two days so if I really put my mind to it I can really bang this out quickly and then move on to the other Oslo hats that I have planned so yes I have four hats total that I am planning to knit for gift knits and the third one is for my niece and I did some sleuthing to find out that she really loves pink I mean who doesn't so I picked out these two pink yarns from my yarn stash to make her Oslo hat out of so the base yarn is a fingering weight nylon sock yarn from Sorella this is the color boulangerie from their spring tonals collection just a really nice pale kind of ballerina pink you might even say it leans a little bit coral but I'm going to pair it with this really nice speckled Surrey lace alpaca from Birch and Lily. This Surrey was gifted to me, but this I purchased on my own. So this is, I think the color Marvelous. I don't know what happened to the label. It's somewhere in a pile of labels, but it's this really nice deeper shade of pink with a lot of speckles. Like you can see the blue is probably the most prevalent, some darker pink. And I think together they'll look really nice and I'm gonna do the Oslo hat. I don't know what size, I have to kind of figure out based on her age and the charts that exist for head circumference based on age and then I will cast on from there with these two held together. I think this is gonna be a really fun one to knit so I'm looking forward to casting this one on. And then the last Oslo hat I have planned is for my nephew and he really likes blue. So it was funny because I didn't actually have blue yarn in my yarn stash to use for his hat even though I love blue, and I actually have a lot of blue yarn, but all of the blue yarn that I have is earmarked for sweater projects that I was not willing to break up to use a couple skeins for a hat. So I actually ordered this yarn from Birch and Lily Fiber Co. And this is the color Four Year 411. It's from her Parent Trap collection. And I'll be honest, I love that movie, but I have not watched it in a really long time. And I cannot remember what the reference to For Your 411 is from. But regardless, it's this really nice blue color. I would say it's pretty close to navy. It kind of has like a slate blue like undertone. I think the camera is making it seem a lot brighter than it is in person. It's definitely more muted. Maybe when I hold it back there, you can kind of see like it's predominantly blue, but I think it leans a little bit slate gray kind of in person it does so i got two skeins of this for the oslo hat for my nephew again it'll be one of the child sizes and yeah looking forward to casting this on as well with all of the oslo hats i thought it would be a good idea for myself to start with the smallest ones and then work my way up to the larger ones just try to get through them quicker obviously the order at which i knit them doesn't really matter but to me i feel more accomplished the faster i get them done so getting the small baby ones out of the way before i move on to the bigger sizes to me helps me move that motivation or keep that motivation going 
And I have one more gift knit planned and it is for my sister's boyfriend who I also don't think watches my videos at all. So if you are, I would recommend to not watch this, but I don't think that he is. So I'm planning on making him knit socks and he is someone who I think is very gift knit worthy because he really appreciates like handcrafted stuff. He likes crafting himself. So I'm kind of excited to make him a pair of socks. And my plan is to make a DK pair weight a DK weight pair of socks because a fingering weight pair of socks would just be way too labor intensive and the DK weight should go by fairly quickly. So I went to my local yarn store and picked up this Dirty Water Dye Works Lucia DK. Now this is a 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon DK weight yarn, which I didn't know existed, but pretty cool that it is. So I got two skeins of this. This is the color Fog. It's a really nice tonal gray. And my plan is to knit just vanilla DK weight socks. I'm gonna use the free pattern from the Crazy Sock Lady, but I am going to adapt it a little bit and make it a two by two ribbed sock. I think the two by two rib will help with the fit because I don't have his exact foot dimensions. All I have is his shoe size, which I sneakily found out when he was visiting last. I peeked inside his shoe to see what size it was and like wrote it down in my knitting notebook for future use. So again, I'll just have to go off of kind of standard measurements based on his shoe size. So I'm hoping that by incorporating ribbing into the sock all over, it will kind of help to make the sock a better fit in case it's not perfect. So yeah, I'm also excited to cast these on, of course. Like I said before, I kind of have my sock mojo back. I think a DK weight pair of socks will help because they should go by quickly, although they are gonna be men's socks, which are pretty large compared to the socks that I knit for myself. So I'm hoping it doesn't get too labor intensive with how long they need to be, but I think I have enough time to get all of those gift knits done by Christmas. If I focus on those, which I have been, in fact, I've put most of my other projects on hold. As you could see, I didn't really have a lot of updates on my other main whips. I'm really resisting the urge to cast on new projects despite really wanting to cast on new projects for myself. So I'm gonna try to get my gift knits done as fast as possible so then I can get back to my favorite project as fast as possible. Now we will get into some yarn acquisitions. I have a lot of new yarn to share with you guys, which is very exciting. We're in the season of end of the year sales, Black Friday sales, and I don't know, a lot of yarn stores were having sales that I just couldn't resist. First up, Knit Picks had their big sale. I think they literally call it the big sale. And I've been wanting to try Knit Picks palette for a really long time. I've heard very good things about it from a lot of other knitters and it's super affordable and I've really wanted to try it for a sweater. So they had some palette on sale during their big sale. So I picked up a sweater's quantity of Knit Picks palettes in the color Mist. So yeah, it's a really nice pale gray color. Obviously I like gray and I'm kind of accumulating a lot of gray knits, but I'm not too upset about it. Like I don't mind having multiples of the same color or like multiple knits, but different shades of the same color. I think that's kind of fun. And I think neutrals are easy to style and yeah, looking forward to using it. First impressions of this yarn, it is very soft. I feel like I was worried about it being scratchy or tough because it is such an affordable yarn. I feel like it had the chance to be kind of like itchy right off the bat, which I have a pretty high tolerance for itchiness with wool, but it's nice to know that just from a hand feel, it does feel very soft. It definitely has texture, but it's softer than what I was expecting, which I think is a plus. This is a two ply yarn. It's a fingering weight wool. It, this comes in a 50 gram ball and there's 231 yards in this ball. I end up getting 10 of these, which for fingering weight is a lot, but I want to hold this double for a DK weight sweater at some point and I don't really have a pattern earmarked for it yet. I just kind of want to have this and if inspiration strikes with maybe a new DK weight pattern that I just need to cast on, I'm happy to have this available to me in my yarn stash. And Knitting for Olive was also having a sale. They were doing a free shipping worldwide sale, which I really wanted to take advantage of. So I ended up getting a sweater quantity of merino and soft silk mohair. They are both in the color putty. So I'll start with the color, or I'll start with the merino. Many of you are familiar with this, but just the quick specs, it's sold in 50 gram balls. There is 250 meters in a single ball. It's fingering weight, 
pretty high twist, very smooth. I have one other quantity of merino in my yarn stash, but I actually haven't knit with it ever before. So I'm excited to possibly have a new sweater coming up in this yarn. And I got the matching soft silk mohair. So this is a 25 gram ball in the 25 grams. There is 225 meters. And this is, what is the percentage? This is 70% mohair and 30% silk. So putty was advertised and why I purchased it because it's like a cooler tone cream color. So this is the Merino. You can definitely see it definitely kind of has like a, a slight greenish hue. Definitely a cream, definitely close to a white, but definitely on the maybe more gray green side. Now the soft silk mohair, you also can see it's definitely a cooler cream color. But the interesting thing is that when I put these together, I feel like they don't look the same. Now I know they're not gonna look the same because they're completely different fibers, but I feel like I expected them to have more of a match. And I, I don't have a problem with it. I know that when I knit this up, they'll sort of blend and kind of make their own homogenous color between the two, but I was just kind of surprised. I feel like if you asked me without me knowing the tags, I would tell you that these are two different colorways. But regardless, I'm excited to use these together in a project similar to the Knit Picks palette sweater quantity that I bought. I don't have a specific pattern in mind for this yarn. I just want to have it. So if inspiration strikes in the future, I can cast on something without needing to go into like a yarn that I already have marked for another project. So yeah, that's what I got from Knitting for Olive. And I did receive a delivery of a pre-order that I got from the Fuzzy Peach Fibers Hello Pumpkin collection. This collection launched for pre-order, I think in October or September. It was sometime in early fall. And I ordered this color called Midnight which is this really pretty forest green. Now, I find that forest greens are really hard to pick up on cameras. I don't really know the technology behind that. Maybe you have found similar experiences, but it's hard to correctly, I think, capture a good forest green on camera. So even right now, I'll be honest, I would say it's leaning more blue than it looks like in person. It definitely is like a pure forest green or like hunter green. And I got a sweater quantity of this. This is the Dreamy DK base. It's 100% superwash merino, 231 yards in this 100 gram skein. So yeah, I'm really excited to have finally received this and I do have a sweater pattern in mind. I do want to cast on the Crea Bea's Stick Season sweater pattern that was recently released. I think that's a really cute pattern and I can just picture it so well in this deep green color. I think the texture and the shaping and the construction, it just all looks so great. So I'm excited to cast this on. This is one of those projects that I do really want to cast on, but I think I'm going to use my gift knits as motivation to, or I'm going to use this as motivation to finish my gift knits, because once I finish my gift knits, maybe I can cast this on closer to Christmas. So yeah, with December, it's definitely a time to sort of think about the status of my projects and what I want to do for next year. Upcoming videos will definitely include my winter knitting plans video. I have to sit down and really think about what I want to include in that video. And I kind of have an idea already of projects that I'm going to cast on. And it's just a matter of putting those in sort of an organized video format for you all. I think going into the fall, I thought I had, I gave myself the expectation that I would clear my needles by the end of 2023. That is clearly not going to happen. I think I casted on too many projects in the fall and at this point there's definitely zero hope for me to get close to that. But I think that's okay. I don't really think it's necessary to clear your needles before the end of the year. I think there is some benefit to it, especially with the new year to start fresh with new projects. It can be exciting. So. Maybe I'll give it another try next year to try and clear my needles by the end of the calendar year because I can totally see that being something that would be fun, but at the same time, I'm not gonna be upset at myself for not doing that. Like there's no need to put pressure on finishing all my other projects. I also think with next year's knitting, I might be a little bit more 
fluid with what I cast on and when I cast on. I feel like I've been kind of limiting myself in terms of like I have plans and but I also will get these spontaneous cravings to cast on a specific yarn or cast on a specific project that might not have been in my structured plans. And I've been keeping myself from doing that just because I wanna to stick to the plan because the plan has a purpose and the plan is more orderly, but I feel like then I lose motivation with that spontaneous project that I wanna do and then I don't wanna do it anymore because I put it off and I think it'll just be more fun to be more spontaneous and fluid with my knitting in the winter and going into next year. So you'll probably see more of that from me. I'm still gonna have like knitting projects that I wanna get done, but I might approach them with a more, you know, fluid mentality and not keep myself limited by a list. And before I wrap up the video, I do want to announce a new winner for the Knitivation book giveaway. I know I've been talking about this for a while now, but unfortunately the first winner never contacted me, so I did have to draw a new winner. So congratulations to Handmade by Tori. If this is you, you have won the giveaway of the Knitivation Stitch Dictionary by Andrea Rangel. The book will be sent to you by Penguin House Publishing. So please send me an email here letting me know your address. So so we can get that book sent out to you and congratulations for winning the giveaway and that brings us to the end of today's podcast thank you so much for joining me i'm looking forward to making some more videos this month in december i'll see you in the next one bye